What's up, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bartle, coming at you with another edition of Bartle's Breakdown. I got a special group on here today, ladies and gentlemen. We got the flying Illini in the house, Marcus Liberty, Larry Smith, Urban Small. What's good, fellas? What's good? What's, What's good, Steve? What's going hey, on, Bardo? Hey, man, I've been waiting to do this for a long time, guys. Get the team on and talk. And, you know, so, sometimes in, in, in times of adversity, good things come out. And, you know, we uh, come together as a group. And I wanted to bring you guys together, man, and let's just talk about some of our stories, seeing that we're the coldest team in Illinois history. No well, doubt, man. I'm, facts, okay. facts. All right. So, E. Small, let me start with you first, man. Uh, yeah. Playing in Simeon, balling out. Y'all, you and Nick, I believe uh, you guys got a state title under your belt as well? Mm -hmm. Well, right? me and Nick don't have a state title. Um, they won a state title in 84, and uh, we lost. Um, we won 85, went down state play. We lost to Ed Horton in Springfield, Lamphere. Okay. Which would have been my junior year. And then my senior year, we lost to Marcus and King in the city championship. Okay. You know, at that time, it could only be one team to go down state. So uh, uh, we lost to King in uh, 86. So, Urban, you, I know you had some places that you could have gone to school. Why did you choose Illinois? Well, I think one of the reasons I chose Illinois is because uh, uh, when I came there on my recruiting visit, just um, – Lowell had hosted me, and I had knew Lowell from um, Chicago area, from high schools, and um, then I got to meet a couple of the, uh, other guys, like Blackwell was there, and you know, and, and it just it just made me feel more at home. At first, I thought that they was only recruiting me because uh, they was trying to get Nick or trying to get Ben, but that's why I kind of held out and was one of the last ones to sign because I was trying to make sure that it was a need or a fit for me, and. Uh, when I assessed everywhere else that I could have went, I just thought that Illinois was um, one of the uh, most prominent places. You know, I, 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 Southern Illinois was one of your hometown was one of my uh, top three choices, and I remember coming to Southern, and I even talked to you when I was down at Southern, mm -hmm. and, and we talked about Illinois at that particular time as well. Um, so you know, I, it, it was a great fit for me. You know, I'm happy that I did what I did. Uh, and some of the things that I was able to accomplish there. And so Larry Smith, uh, for those that don't know, was one of the top point guards in the country coming out of Alton, Illinois in high school. Larry, you could have gone a lot of different places. Why did you choose Illinois? Um, I think I chose Illinois, first of all, everyone was leaving. As you guys recall, Bruce Douglas, Ephraim Leonard, Altenberg, I think he got in, so he, he was coming back for another year. So there's a lot of spots left to be taken up, uh, and also it was a state school. Um, I was enamored with Illinois, and I saw them play Oklahoma, and Wayne and Tisdale, they took them down fairly easy. And that's pretty much then when I really decided, like, man, I'm, I'm going here. And that was like in 1984, I believe. But Steve, as you recall, remember, we, me and you visited together. <laughs> I don't know if you recall. I do. The Nebraska game, was it Mike Rozier? Nebraska the bids like 63 to 10 or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but, uh, but um, also, guys, the uh, only other place I visited was Iowa State. And after that, I just shut my business down. Me and Chris Henderson, I think he was, was he from Leo? I, I could be yeah, wrong. he's from yeah, Leo, yeah. Right. Me and him visited Iowa State together uh, with Jeff Greer and Gary Thompson, those, those guys. But when I came back from that, I shut my recruit down and told Jimmy Collins and Coach Nagy. I think it had to be early, well, late September, so I was committing in. Okay. And then uh, last but certainly not least, the number one player in all of America in high school is Marcus Liberty from King High School. Marcus, you could have written your ticket. Uh, why Illinois? Man, Bardo, uh, it was tough. It was a tough decision for me, man, because <clears throat> Syracuse is on me really hard and uh, Illinois was on me really hard. And uh, I actually, a lot of people don't even know this, I actually did verbally commit to Syracuse. Mm, okay. And uh, <clears throat> because I had a good time with those guys down there when I visit, and um, and you can get this story from Coach Collins too. Coach Collins said I was probably one of the hardest guys to convince to come to the University of Illinois. Um, I knew all you guys, you know, from playing in the state championship games and in the tournament uh, in high school, played against you, Bardo. Saw you play Bardo, and saw Kendall play, saw Nick and Irvin play, uh, and then had 
you know, Larry Smith, uh, Larry uh, in camps, you know, when we went to the University of Illinois team camp. So I saw Larry a lot. So <clears throat> I already knew kind of, you know, you guys, what you were all about. But when I saw Syracuse and what they were all about and what they were trying to bring to the table and, and watching their practices with Sherman Douglas and they throwing alley-oops and running up and down the court. And I got so excited, man. And, and you know how college coaches are, man. They tell you, you know, what you want to hear. And, and when I was there, he's like, man, and this is a true thing he told me. He said, uh, I'm going to let you play your position if you come to Syracuse. Mm. He said, if you go to the University of Illinois, they're going to put you in the post. <laughs> and it's crazy. And I'm like, how do you know this? You know, this stuff. But a young kid, my mom and dad didn't know anything about the recruiting. Uh, so I had to figure out a lot of a lot of stuff on my own. So what the coach was telling me, I was starting to believe, you know. So I said, all right, I'm coming to Syracuse. So I verbally committed. Nobody, this story never came out. So nobody really knows because verbal commit is just, you know, I never signed my name or anything sure. saying I was coming, but I did give him a verbal commit. So to make a long story short, Coach Collins got on the phone, you know, called me, and he's like, man, I heard what's going on down there, man. No, 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 that can't happen. You know, you are, you are, you're an Illinois guy. You're a Chicago guy. You need to stay home, man. And he just broke it down to me, man, and it made me – it made sense. You know, your parents could come to see you. Uh, your friends could come to see you. Uh, you know these guys already. You know what they're about. And I changed my mind, man, and, 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 and the rest was history. I joined the University of Illinois, joined you guys, man. I didn't play my freshman year. Uh, I felt like an outcast, of course, you know, and – watching you guys ball and, and I couldn't practice. I couldn't do a lot of that stuff. And, and it was me by myself. See, at least Irvin and Nick had each other when they set out. It That's was true. me right. by myself. Right, right, right. So, I, I mean, I saw you guys in the dorms and all that. We was hanging and kicking it like that. But, you know, man, kids from Chicago, man, we want to hoop, you know. And it was, it was taken away from me that one year. And I think that actually hurt me a little bit. So, but that second year came around, man, 1989. And, and we were back rolling, man, and I was back playing again and loving it and was excited about my decision, man, to join you guys and play with the University of Illinois. And we became the flying the line like that year, you know, from Mr. Dick Vitale, man. So very excited, man. And and I like what we're doing right now, starting this podcast and, and, and getting things out about us because who can tell our story better than us? Amen. <laughs> hey, turn to your neighbor and say he's preaching. <laughs> Black Mark. Hey, Black let, Mark. let me let me shout out the people that are on with us. Aaron Janowski, he says, "Wow, All Star lineup." Jill Brown Smith, I L L. She said, "I love this group. I have to go finish a recording. Come back to Facebook." Uh, uh, Randall McFarland, Nate Maurice, what's up, Bardo Lib Small Smith, Billy Hill, bring Nate Maurice, Joe Stovall, Andrew Billings. Travis Powers, Michael Payne, Jeff Jarvis, Kevin, Kelvin Phillips, Brett Melton, Andrew Southwood, Laura Leishman, ILL, Jeff, Laura. Jeff Dick, glad you showed up. Uh, Gary Hogan, Damon Bethea, Michigan State in the house. Coach Scott Fields, what's up, Coach? Emmett Bryant, Peter Weber, Shannon Davis. Oh, my gosh. We got Got a lot Man, of guys, keep here. sharing, keep sharing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sherman Igus, Igus. Yeah, Sherman from High Park. Yeah. All right, what's up, Sherman? Uh, TJ Wheeler is on DJ. with us. TJ. And then it's uh, a three. Yeah, Dave Davis is on. Um, you're even better people than you are basketball players, says Peter Weber. Thank you, Peter. Uh, if you guys, if you, if our viewers have any questions or comments. Now's your time. We're gonna try to do this on a consistent well, well, basis. Well, 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 Steve, let's talk about let's talk about your recruitment and what what kind of brought you to the University of Illinois uh, around you know. Let, let's not leave you out. We need to they need to know about you too and how 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 it was for you being recruited by Illinois. Great call, Irvin. Uh, Y'all can see that Irvin was a point forward back at Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the assist, brother. Um, I, I had about uh, my top two were Northwestern and Illinois. Really, Northwestern, Northwestern. Illinois, Michigan State. Uh, Kendall Gill and I went with Andy Pendleton, Anthony Pendleton, from on Detroit? a visit to Michigan State. Pendleton from Detroit. Go ahead, Larry. And Anthony Pendleton was from Detroit. Yeah, uh, from Flint, Michigan. 
Okay. Right. Wow. Yep. And so we wow. were on the, we were on the visit. We go and it was a it was a big football weekend. So Michigan drugged Michigan State like thirty one to three. Wow. And Michigan State was a party school back then. I don't know if they still are, but we went out and, and kicked it, man. We went to a club. Go in. It's about thirty something degrees. Fight breaks out. Gunshot goes off. Folks get out the club. The temperature dropped 30 degrees, bro. Now it's zero. And my <laughs> Southern Illinois ass can't handle the cold like that. I was like, I'm not going to Michigan State. Um, it came down to Northwestern in Illinois. I want to go to uh, want to go to Northwestern. And I came on my visit. I came home from my visit. My mom said, Well, baby, what'd you think? And I said, Mom, I love it. I'm going to Northwestern. My dad said, son, get in the car. And we drove around, and he talked about, you'll be the best player on the worst team in the Big Ten. <laughs> he said, you'll be a leading scorer, but you won't win, and you'll hate it. Wow. I got out the car. I said, Mom, I'm going to Illinois. <laughs> and my wow. dad slept on the couch for two weeks. I'm not lying. <laughs> After the first week, I went to him. I said, Dad, is, it, is, is Mom being serious? He said, don't worry about it, son. I know what I'm doing. And he knew what he was doing, so I'm glad, uh, you know, I, I chose he Illinois took, and formed this. Team. For the team. But see, Bardo, see, Bardo, that's what I was talking about. See, you had that father figure who can guide you and give you some, you know, instructions about different schools, different universities, different coaches, philosophies, and all that. I didn't have that, you know. So, so right, man, big, right. big, big ups to your pops, man, for, for guiding you. Man. And, and, and it's a lot of kids just going through that right now, man. That don't have a parent and make wise decisions. And sometimes these decisions are bad decisions, man. So big shout out to you, Pops, man. Great call on that, Marcus. Uh, Steve Prophet, uh, Terrell Hankins, Sherman. Oh, I, I got Sherman already. Um, let's see, Marcus Carroll. Marcus Carroll from Texas. That's my guy. That's your guy? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sherman, Sherman Niggas has got a good one. Tell me about your practice sessions with everybody. Who, Who wants to watch that one? I, I'll start off. Go ahead. Well, especially when we first got there, are we just talking about the final four year or the years leading up or what? Any practice, man. Just just practice. Oh, We're talking about practice. practice. Yeah. yeah. Then the competition was crazy. Um, don't think because you had a good day. That, that's going to be like that all the time. We all went at each other all the time. Steve might have his day. Kendrick might dominate me and Steve one day. That don't mean nothing. You got to be kind of work every day. Somebody lose so many spots that were open, so uh, that's that's what it looked seemed, seemed like to me. The competition, looking back at that, that was made us so. When it came to playing other teams, that was like that was a piece of cake. We just let it every day in practice. Yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, I'll go second. I, I think that um, when we were at Huff Gym, um, I think that a lot of people talk about that 84 Olympic team, how no, they played their best basketball behind uh, closed doors. I think when we was at Huff, those were some of the best games and the best competition that we had ever had, man, because everybody, I don't care. If you played at Illinois, you got dunked on before by somebody <laughs> on that team. And, and, that, and that's the God's honest truth, man. That's I mean, everybody. Seven footers, yens, ooh, ooh, when, you know, when I was, everybody got dunked on. I don't care who you are or who, who you say you are. And, 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 and I think as a group playing together allowed us to know more about each other. You know, uh, I, you knew what your job was, you know, and that's, that's one of the keys of this team that everybody knew what their job and their position was. You know, my job was to make sure that I get every loose ball, every rebound, play tough defense and school when I'm uh, when I'm wide open. You know what I'm saying? So I played my role, and I and even when we practiced, I didn't go outside of that role too much. You didn't catch me out there shooting a bunch of threes and all that. But I, I would try to read Larry, Steve, and those guys who shoot jump shots and markers and see where the ball was coming off the rim, which would enable me to be a better rebounder dealing with the offensive rebounds, you know. So I think – but I think that those situations when we was at Huff, I can remember times where it was 5,000 students in there watching us practice. <laughs> you know, it was, it was crazy, man. Huff was crazy, man. And a lot of people don't remember that, but but we, but we, we used to pack Huff out. We'd pack it out like they was having a volleyball game in there. 
You know, it used to be so many people in our practice sessions, man, and, and it was crazy. And this was before any coaches was allowed to even yeah. go over yeah. any yeah. fundamental drills or anything. Yeah. This was just raw yeah. stuff, raw footage, you know? So yep. that, that, that's what I think about the practices, those practices. What about you, Liv? Well, I, I remember a lot of the practices, man, but it, at the same time, <clears throat> when we was having those practices, guys, the coaches wasn't there. So we were actually just, you know, balling sometimes what we was talking about with Huff, uh, Irv, and when, when we had uh, right before the season type practices and we all join up and we would just put the shoes on, lace them up, man, and, and hoop. You know, somebody was going to get dunked on by Kenny Battle. Kenny Battle was going to do something crazy. But the thing that I remember most, man, of how we all just was together, you know, and I think those practices helped us, you know, be with our togetherness as far as uh, going out there hooping. And, and we would party too, man. We would hang out <laughs> the night before, you know, at cams or wherever. And we'll, the next day, we were there ready to practice, man. And I think that showed a lot, you know, because we are college students, man. Let's face it, we are college students. We're going to hang out. We're going to do things. And we did that, man. And we still showed up to practice and balled out, man. So those are the things that I remember and things that I also remember was one day, one summer, I remember uh, Ken Norman and uh, Wiggins. They used to come to yeah. our practices or uh, in the summer, our workouts, man. So I learned a lot just by watching those guys, man how they would compete and, and they wasn't afraid of us and we wasn't bagging down from them. And it was just crazy back there, man. And I would, I love those memories, man. And they're going to always be with me. Marcus Liberty, ladies and gentlemen, is referring to Mitchell Wiggins, the father of Andrew Wiggins. Mitchell Wiggins was a baller and he was in a, uh, I think he was during the drug suspension that he was at University of Illinois. Yeah, his wife was the track coach, I think, Steve. Oh, his she wife was, was training for the Olympics. That's yes. what she, yes. yes. She was training for the yes. Olympics and she was an Olympic sprinter. But right. from Canada, right. from Canada, Mitchell from Canada, Canada, right? Woo, he used to wear us out. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I remember about practice, fellas, that you're gonna laugh about this. Marcus Liberty comes in, and I'm a defensive dude. So I'm like, I'm gonna lock this young cat up, man. <laughs> I know this cat can play. I'm gonna lock him up. I had never seen a six eight guy come so fast down the down the floor. And I'm at, the, I'm at the top of the key, and I'm going to try to corral Marcus. Marcus had the innate ability to see what I was doing defensively. And when I would shift, he would go the other way. I couldn't do nothing with him. And I still, I still couldn't do nothing with him after I played with him for a year or two. But that was one of the things I remember in practice. Like, I never said anything to you, Marcus, but you used to piss me off. It's the first time you I heard that, man. Appreciate that, man. For real. I, could, I, couldn't keep, I couldn't keep you in front. You were too damn fast and too big. And I, 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 to this day, the only thing I wish, well, not the only thing, one of the things I wish Lou Henson would have done was to put you at the guard position and let you go. Put you at the two or three That's on, the, on the perimeter and let you do work. If, if you wanted to run into the post, that would have been fine too. Right. I think he should have let you be on the, on the perimeter. And I think, you know, the things that Jim Beheim was telling you you could have experienced at Illinois. I, that, yeah. That's just my opinion. Uh, both. I, I agree. I agree one hundred percent with that, Steve. You know, okay. I agree with that one hundred percent. Bo Bo Singer, uh, Gary Stevens, what's up, fellas? Uh, what's John, up? What's up? John Gia Marco, uh, Jamari Mari Lee, my young boy. What's up, Jamari? You better be taking care of yourself up there, man. Don't be young and foolish. This thing is real. Uh, R.J. Fitz, Jamie Luneman Schrader. Um, it says I read Stevens reading on Kofi. What do you what do you what do you guys think? Should should he have gone in the second round or okay, should he go in the second round or undrafted? Or is he destined to be a D League player or come back to Illinois and get, oh boy, that's too damn much. Peter, you might <laughs> gotta run on there. What do y'all hey, think about take, Kofi Coburn uh putting his see, name in the draft? Yeah, let me take that. All right. These guys, these young guys now, they have so many options. They, they can put their name in the draft, pull them back out. <laughs> uh, I think they're allowed to do that twice, aren't they? Am I correct? I think so. And so they'll send back. We come out. We didn't have those. We couldn't do that. Uh, and they have there's more jobs overseas. But he's going to get paid somewhere. I mean, that, that, that's the big deal. He's going to make some money. But uh, that, that's just my take, short take on that. Yeah, yeah, I, think, opportunities. I, he, I think, man, I think Kofi, right? 
Yeah. I think he's putting his name out there. I think, man, every kid, if they feel that they belong and they can make it to that level, sure, why not put your name in the draft? Uh, and I don't know what the coronavirus situation that they can test the water, actually. It's either you're going to have to be in or be out now, I think. You, you, I don't think they're going to have that, you know, that they can see you and you can work out for some teams, then you can make your decision. So I think he's going to probably have to say or get the evaluation through the NBA uh, and see, but they just looking at video. They just looking at your video and seeing what you're capable of doing. When I first watched the kid play, I think he had, he showed some signs of some, some greatness. Right. But I think if he do one more year, you know, it will show, you know, that he can really be that elite type player. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I always say this to people, do we have someone on that bench that's going to show him what he needs to be working on once the mm -hmm. NBA say you need to get evaluated, you need to do this, this, and that. Will there be somebody on the, on the staff that can help that guy or help him become the player that they, the NBA wants to see? Irvin? I, I, think that, uh, I think that the kid is very good. He's a very good player, and, but I think that he needs another year. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, another year at Illinois, if Io decides to stay, I think that it would possibly uh, bring us a Big Ten championship because he's a force inside, man. And I think that <clears throat> going, going, going to the NBA. One thing about it, a lot of guys, you know, when Nick was getting ready to leave, he was so undecisive, man, and he was so he beat himself up so much. Sometimes you have to make a decision, stick with that decision, and then say, "Hey, look, this is what I'm going to do." And this is how I'm going to do it. You got to have a plan, but you also got to have an exit strategy. So you got to know what, if this doesn't work, what am I going to do and how am I going to do that? So I, I think my personal opinion, you know, I'm an Illinois guy, so I like to see the kids stay in school one more year. But if he can make money and he can, if he's a first rounder, I believe it's a good move for him if, if he can be in the first round. I would agree, uh, Irvin. I think that, uh, I think it should test the waters. Uh, if you can test the waters and still come back and, get your eligibility, there's no, there's no loss uh, in that. I think the young man has tremendous upside. I've seen him extend his shooting range through the season, and he's only really been playing five years of, of organized basketball, so his, his ceiling is, is incredible. Uh, and the cat works hard, man. He, he's a hard worker. Ayo Dusumu is gone. He's not coming back. He's gone. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what and, happens. And, and this is another thing, though, Steve. Uh, say you decide that you don't want to, you're going to come back to school. Mentally, now, you are, you're figuring, I'm an NBA player in your mind, which means that you will capture those guys in the Big Ten and, and devour most of them because you figure, I'm, I should have been in the league anyway. So mentally, your mental, your mental aspect will be like, well, I know I should have been in the league. So anybody I go up against that, that doesn't have that same mentality, you know, I'm going to dominate well, that's, that's what Ayo Dosumu did this year. Right. That's why he was so dominant, because he came back, and he's just like, you know what? This is going to be my last year. I got to dominate these cats, and that's exactly what happened. Hold on, guys. Let me, let me get to some of these guys. Cause they, okay, Joe Stovall, who always comes hard. Um, why is this not working? I knew this thing was going to stop working. Um, and Ernestine Hewlett, Jeff Dykus, Chris Wick. Uncle Smoothie's in the house. What's up, Uncle Smoothie? Uh, Phillips Lomax uh, Beckham. Terry Matsko. Uh, uh, Malcolm Thomas. Mark Aguirre. We hey, got the, Paul. Paul. We got the best player in the Paul history on, in here. The What's legend. up, Mark? The legend, man. Mark, the legend. Man, that I wish my... I could bring Mark in here on this call. Hey, uh, hey that was my squad back in the day, y'all. Gary Garland, Blast. That was my squad, DePaul. Gary Garland, the Bradshaw, those guys. Joe Ponzel. Skip <laughs> Dillard. There you go. There you go. So, all right, I got it. Here's a good one. Larry, you look like you went. Oh, no, you're good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. I'm looking at a delay. Aaron Janowski, fellas, who was the uh, toughest player you faced in high school and college? Great question, Aaron. Who wants to take that first? High school, first. And high school ahead, and college. High school, high school. And college. Man, I'm gonna I'm I'm keep it real, man. Like 
when I was in high school, man, I'm gonna say one of the toughest guys I played is, is your buddy, Steve, and my buddy too, Walter Bond, man. He was Walter tough. Bond. Walter Bond was tough in high school, man. Yes, Every was. time we played Collins High School, he was strong, man. He's about six four, six five. It was hard for me to get by him, man. But you know, he he was one of the toughest players I played against in high school, man. And as far as the pro, I mean, as far as college go, of course, it's got to be one of the Michigan guys. Uh, uh, Glenn Rice was uh, hard to guard. Uh, Willie Burton was hard to guard. Uh, then you then, then you go to the, some of the bigs that I had to stick, you know, Ed Horton. Those guys were hard to guard, man. They were dominant players. So I would have to go ride with those three guys. So it's great, great choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me in high school, believe it or not, it's Marcus Liberty. You know, uh, Marcus was just, he was a hard cover inside, outside. And, and you know, we played small fry with, with Hope on Dynasty's team. Me, Marcus, his brother, Durrell. Um, so, so it's just been always been hard for me to play against Marcus. It, it was something about him, man. He could always knew how to block my shot, man. I, I used to hate when he guarded me, man. <laughs> and I think in college, uh, and you guys will will probably contest it. Is I think Steve Scheffler, you know, I played on the post, so I think Steve Scheffler from Purdue was one of the hardest guys to guard for me, man. Strong as a bull, can't mm. get around him, can't it, can't can't wedge on screens. Yep. Can't I mean he just he was just so big you couldn't move him. It was like playing against a a, a six ten stack of bricks, man. You know, that's what's up, uh, Larry. Me out. Yeah, for myself. Well, Steve, you know, being from Southern Illinois, the competition is, is, isn't as stiff as up in the Chicago area. But um, I'll have, so I, I'll take my best competition in high school when I went to Five Star Camp in, I think, early July of 85. And a guy named Rodney Monroe from Hagerstown, Maryland. Ooh, he went to NC State. State. And I, yeah. He was a problem. Me and him went at it all week in Five Star. <laughs> and, uh, as far as high school, so Rodney Monroe from Hagerstown, Maryland. And, and he was younger than you. Of, he was younger than you, too, right, Larry? Yeah, you're younger. Him and Jay. Yeah. I mean, him and Jay was out there, man. We was going at it all week long. But then come college, I, uh, I would have to say Steve Smith, as far as the Big Ten, Steve had that little herky jerk move he did on us. He didn't have the height, the handles, and the shot. So he's a, he always was a tough guard. But there's just one guy, my last year when all you guys were gone, we played Wisconsin. Milwaukee, <laughs> and a guy named Von McDay. Oh, I remember Von. Fifty-three, y'all. Yeah, y'all fifty-three. Maybe like fifty-three. Von <laughs> could, hey, he could hey, put, he could score in the phone booth, Larry. Man, man, man. So there's, there's my three or four guys. Oh, that's I cool. Think, but I think, I think you and Bardo, the guards. Back then, man, the Big Ten had some solid, great guards, man. Yeah, so you guys yeah. Were going to get yeah. some good guards yeah. every single game, man. B.J. Armstrong. Yeah. We could go on yeah. and talk yeah. about all those great guards that you guys yeah. had to Edward face. Stevens, so, Jay Edwards. Yeah. No, it's a great plethora of, of players. I Let me think. I think uh, the guy that I had the most trouble guarding in high school was Roger McClendon. You guys remember him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Champagne yeah. Centennial was a McDonald's. Yeah, Rod, yeah. Wait, what's Scott Nagy? Yeah. Where'd y'all play those guys at, Steve? Say it again, Larry. Where, where'd y'all play those guys at? In the Carbonell, uh Holiday Tournament. Okay, all right. Yeah, and Roger could do nothing with him, man. Could could not do nothing with him. Wore me smooth. out. And then uh, in college, it was Chris Morris from uh, Auburn. Oh, yeah, I remember Ooh. that game. Oh, I remember oh, that God. game. I remember watching that game. I remember I that game. Do you, you remember what he did to me? From the, from the shot from well, the Steve, I thought, Steve, let me just say, to cut great. you off, not to cut you off. That's all right. I thought yeah, you were going to say first. Scott Skiles, because I remember what, what, what Scott did when, <laughs> when he came to Illinois. He, he was shooting and, to, and went by the bench and told Scott Skiles, this y'all defensive player of the year. <laughs> but, but Chris, Chris wow, was man. playing to have court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scott Skiles was, too. Yeah. yeah. No, Scott, Scott was letting it fly, but – Dude, Chris Morris was 6'8", yeah. with hops. Yeah. Handle on you, post yeah. you up, yeah. handle, can shoot from the parking lot. I couldn't do nothing with him, man. Yeah. 
Uh, they had another big guy on that team, too, I Mike remember. Mike Jones. What is his name? Mike Jones? Yep, yep. And, and you know Mike Jones gave us 34 that night. Yep, I Chris remember. Chris gave us 31. Yeah. yeah. He put 31 on my head. Mike Jones this, gave us 34. And this was in our tournament. <laughs> it, exactly. At the Assembly Hall. Exactly. I, it was, our, it was yep. our Thanksgiving tournament or something. Hey, hey fellas. No, it's a lot of classic. Hey, guys. When we, hey, if y'all remember that game, we missed like eight one and ones. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I've been yep. several myself. Let me see. I got um, uh, for each of you on the panel. Oh, no, we, we, we just did that. Uh, Cam, <laughs> what is Cam's, uh, what is Marcus talking about in terms of Cam's as TJ Wheeler? Oh, man, TJ, uh -oh. come on, man. You was you was probably in high school coming down there kicking it with us, man, at the at the bar, man. So yeah, we just had a couple of beers, man. Nothing. Yeah, no right. harm, hey, no, hey, no Steve, harm, no foul, hey, man. Hey Steve, so, you remember Cam used to have the quarter beers? Remember they used to have the quarter beers? Thursday night with the quarter beers all on the floor, man. We stepping all over it, and uh, Cam's was something, man. I heard they redid Cam's. Is that right? Yeah. No, they. I think somebody bought it. Yeah, it's, oh. it's something totally different. Oh, yeah. okay. His name Cam's though. They opened another bar up. Oh, for real? Yeah, I read it on. I read it on some article I read. They they opened another thing. It's the new Cam's. Okay. All right. Uh, I was gonna bring, I was gonna bring up something about Cam's. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna let it let it lay. Yeah, uh, let there. Yeah, please. Say that for say that for the book, man. Okay. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Hassan Alamine, good to see you. Octavia Florence Snulligan. What's up, Octavia? Yeah, Octavia. yeah. Octavia, what's up? Octavia. Alumni. There Octavia you go. From Western Hall. Uh, uh, Octavia. Western yep. Hall. Yep. Western yeah. Hall. Wow. Yeah. Hey, do you guys remember uh, Damon Bethea from Michigan State? You remember hmm. Damon? He's older than us, buddy, Steve. No, he's our age. No, he was younger than us, actually. He, I think he's Marcus's age. Oh. He played, he, played with, he played with Max Stahinga, right? Max Stahinga. Yeah, Stahinga, yeah. Um, Steve Smith, all those cats. Mark yeah. Montgomery. Yeah, Damon, okay. Damon was a baller, man. He He's on here. He was uh, one of the Big Ten's most exciting teams of all time. Made me want to play in the Big Ten. Uh, oh, thank you, Damon. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you, Damon. should have came to Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Marcus Carroll says, Got to be as seasoned as possible because most NBA vets don't exactly welcome rooks with open arms these days. Okay. Um, let's, oh, my, my business partner, Karan Godwin. What's up, Karan? Good to see you on here. Uh, Octavia says, I love you guys. Still loaded with basketball knowledge. Gentlemen, thank you, Octavia. Um, I need a good lawyer. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let me see here. Ryan Kelsey. Uh, Kenneth Crump asked, no Kenny battle. We're going to get Kenny on uh, the next one. Um, Antoine Davis from Detroit Mercy has decided to do one more year, says Marcus Carroll. That, that's uh, Mike Davis' son at, uh, at Detroit Mercy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. He was one of the leading scorers in the country along with Marcus's nephew. Um, and he's going to come back. I know, Marcus, your nephew's going to test the waters, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he definitely going to test the waters, man. He want to see where he's at, you know. I, and I told him I support him 100%, man, for doing that, you know. And if it's not right, then he'll come back to school. Okay. Oh, fellas, hold on now. We got Sean Higgins in the house. Sean, Sean Higgins. Higgins. What up, boy? Oh, boy. What up, Higg? That's my wow. man. That's Good my man. See. Good to see you on here, brother. Um, Scott Fields, Michael Payne, um, God feel. That's my Jonathan guy. Jonathan Lindsay, Patrick Kennedy, Pat Kennedy, Pat ILL Kennedy. baby. What's up, Pat? Uh, Marshall Ayers, Norris Thomas, uh, Mark Aguirre said, "Who was the best? Who was the best in high school and college?" Elaborate on that a little bit, Mark, if you would. Um, Karan Gowan asked, "Were there any low moments w when you guys wanted to transfer? Who talked you off the ledge?" Cause some young players need to hear this. Oh, Ed Horton, <laughs> big Ed Horton. What's up, Easy Ed? I, hey, I can't guard Ed Horton now. <laughs> yes, so. Big right. Ed woke me out. All right, that, um, that Dr. Tom Davis uh, shovel pass right up under the basket. 
for a layup. Man, Ed, Ed Horton was as tough as they come, bro. Oh, man. In high um, school. I played against him in high school, too. Yeah, man. Okay, so my my boy Karan's got a great a great question. Were there any low moments when you wanted to transfer? Uh, who wants to start with that? Yeah, I, I'll start. I, it, was a moment, it was a moment for me, you know, that I was uh, – Actually, we was in a meeting. I, we was all in a meeting, and Coach Henson said something that I didn't like. I shot it, you know, shouted back at him, man, and ran out the room. I ran out the room and said, I'm transferring. I, I don't want to deal with this anymore. And Irvin and Coach Collins came and, 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 and actually grabbed me and said, you know, just, just take a deep breath, man, and, and ease up a little bit. But I wasn't, I wasn't trying to hear that. You know, I wasn't trying to hear that. You know, and I don't, I can't even remember what he said, but I know it. I was. I think heated. we were in a we were in a film session, Marcus. I think we yeah, was but, in a film session. But he I was, was talking hot. about how you, yeah, he was saying how you went fighting over the picks and stuff. Right, and I was and, hot. You and, know, and, and everybody, but everybody knew how Coach was in those film sessions. You know, he used to roast Steve in those film sessions. Man. Yeah, but but the, here's what I'm here's what I want to say. But when you in high school. Yeah, and that was my first year, really, because it was my right. sophomore year. But it was really my first, my freshman year. Right. I didn't know. I didn't know, you know, Coach Henson philosophy and all that, really, yeah. because I wasn't really practicing with you guys. So when he said that, you guys were all quiet. I'm like, no, nah, you're not just gonna put me on blast like that, you right? Know, right. In front of right. everybody. So I got kind of heated, and and I was at fault because he is the coach, and I should be, you know, accepting the criticism, but. When I was in high school, when nobody really criticizing me as much, you know, so I wasn't accustomed to that, you know. So when he did that, man, it kind of shook me a little bit, you know, like, man, what do you mean, man? I came in, I'm the stud, I'm that dude, you know, and you're going you're gonna to put me out there like that. So it kind of hurt me. But Irvin came to the rescue. He came out there, put his arms around me. Coach Collins, you know, man, come on, man. That's what coach do, man. You know, don't, don't worry about it. But I was on the pay phone. On the phone, like yeah. about to call, about to yeah. call UCLA. Yeah, true story, true story. UCLA. Yeah, and I love it. You know, you know, true, uh, story, true story, true story. About to hit, about story, to hit my man Walt, Walt Hazard up, man, because you know, and, and he because he had told me before, you know, he came in on my recruiting late, but he was like, man, if, if, if something go down, <laughs> we got a home for you. So I was about to call him, man, but I'm glad I didn't, man, because that was a special year that 1989 team. So. Pam Beggs, Dana Kozlov, I-L-L, Jay Lehman, I-L-L, Michael Englehart, I-L-L, Melvin Nunn. What's up, Melvin? Joe Slow. That's slow. What's My high school teammate. What's going on? Uh, the be Oh, great question by Aaron Janowski. What do you consider the best game of your college career? Who wants to start? Uh, I'll start. I'll Go ahead, Liv. Go ahead. Oh, you know what? Hold on. Hold on. Do we have any more uh, situations that no life transfer? No life. Low life moments. <laughs> Steve, you can, can attest to this. I me and Steve were, Go ahead. <laughs> me, me and Steve were roommates. It was at Forbes Hall, 208. I remember the room number and everything, 208. <laughs> and uh, me, and Steve, me and Steve met each other in high school. But, and then we, now we're competing for the point guard slot in Illinois. Actually, me, him, and Kendall. They didn't tell me that at the time. So saying I was a little behind on the defense and the scheme of things. Steve come from Cost Town. Steve was Steve was Steve always got a bite of person when it came to basketball IQ and things like that. But my thing was I, I Lou could never explain to me why I wasn't playing. That's only I can get. He, he couldn't really, he could he wouldn't even communicate to me, Steve. I would go see him at the office and stuff. What I need to do to be what am I not doing? What I need to do to be better. And y'all know Lou behind closed doors. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it at that. But uh, so then our sophomore year, now I'm still not getting many minutes. And uh, I remember we, you know, remember we used to stay in the, uh, the Chance Hotel during the running break. So we're now we're, we're about to play Tennessee and a guy named Dyron Nixon. And we had practice. I, I missed oh. practice for like two days. <laughs> I, don't know if you, I don't know if you remember that, Steve. I missed practice for like two days. I do. Contemplating going down to Texas. You I know, do. I'm contemplating going to Texas with Tom. Contemplating going to Texas University of Texas with my old friend, Joy Wright, Travis Mays, and those guys. But, uh, but uh, KB came to the room, we talked. He's like, man, just stick it out. My mom was on it too. My mom didn't want me to leave either. And so those were the only low life, low life moments I had at that time was just Lou not being there to communicate with me uh, and tell me what I needed to do to, to get on the court. So that's mm -hmm. my low life moment there. 
I got a good I got a good little life moment because I think you guys will remember this. We are uh, over at Purdue. This is uh, my my junior year. This is the final four year, and we get beat at Purdue. Nick misses a a couple of assignments down the stretch, and Lou was a coward, in my opinion, when it came to checking Nick and Kenny Battle. I'm just going to put it out there. I thought he was a coward. He came to me because he knew I could handle it. But I was pissed because he reamed me out, and we got beat at Purdue. So y'all know my dad was typically there, and Dr. Bryson, God rest his soul, they were Mm -hmm. at the game. So I come out the locker room, and I'm trying to be nice to Dr. Bryson. I get the dad, give him a hug. He said, what's wrong? I said, man, I'm gone. I am gone. I'm, I'm leaving this shit. I'm tired. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can. I try to run through the wall for this cat, and he blames me for this loss. I'm gone. So my dad goes to the office. The, uh, he goes to Lou's office about three days later, and he has a conversation with him. And he, get, you know, and he gets to the point where he understands what Lou is trying to do, but he checks Lou, and he says, listen, the next time you talk to my son like that, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> and so, unfortunately, oh. all of us didn't have a dad like that that could go right. on Marcus's behalf and say, look, you can get at him like you want to, but don't be disrespecting him. Don't right. put stuff on his shoulders that doesn't belong on his shoulders. So that was my story. Irvin, you have one? Man, uh, I <clears throat> my love life story, man, I think everybody contributes to it. I, a lot of times, I just, everybody thought that I should have been playing more. Everybody. I mean, even the dog on walk on say, man, why he won't put you in the game? I mean, even sometime at garbage time, he wouldn't put me in. But one thing I learned from that, and I took from it, was how to be more patient. Um, I was patient. I waited my turn. I waited till, I waited, I waited until the opportunity presented itself. And, and I just tried to be the best teammate. I tried to cheer guys on. Make sure everybody we 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 were happy, and nobody would know that none of these incidents happened, besides the people inside of our little circle. That's right. Because that was as far as it was. That's how that show you the camaraderie and how we really clicked with each other. We knew a lot of personal things about each other, but it didn't go no further than that. You know, like a lot of these teams now, man. If if, if they get mad at each other, all oh, the press and the media know everything that went on in their whole locker room and our locker room stays sacred man regardless to what happened you know like marcus said i went out and started talking to him man come on man. marcus man we need you man we need you you know what i'm saying we need you uh, when, when larry said he had his situation and, and and kb went out and said come on larry you know what i'm saying and that was one thing you know when glenn and, and low and, and kenny man they were at C upper class when they were good for us man because Sometimes when we were just in the dorms, they let us come to their house and experience the family atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? We go there and sit around, talk with them, talk with Glenn, talk with Lowe, and and, and it, it was good. I can remember one summer, and then I'll go I'll go into the uh, next question about the player, um, the best game I had. But we we all had a, a, a drama class all in Craner Center. And we all used to just go over to Lowe's the house when we got out of class, man. It was it was just so much fun. But um, the next question about the best game, I think one of the best games that I had was against Louisville in, in, in the in the tournament. Hey, you had and, a great um, game, Irvin. Yeah, and um, I think that Lowe was a little hurt. He had twisted his ankle, and uh, Kenny was hurt. And Marcus, me and Marcus actually started in that game, and. Uh, uh, I, I was a little nervous playing against Purvis Ellison, but my grit and, and my hard work, I just I just beat him up, man, and beat him up. And I can remember Coach Collins telling me, man, you held Purvis Ellison to 11 points, man, you know. And all I did was work out on the perimeter, try to keep him away from the basket, you know. And as he was cheap on his hedge and I would roll to the basket, and you and Kendall would always catch me for a layup. So I think that that was probably <laughs> to help us as a team, get to the next opponent, which was Syracuse, I think that probably was the best game that I had. And, and, Ir- and Irvin, I met uh, down the road years later, uh, Purvis Ellis. I saw him. Me and him talked. We was at this uh, Nike camp together, and we was messing around with the kids, teaching them basketball. And he said this. He said, man, what, 
Well, whatever happened to that one that one group? That one dude was playing defense on me, man. I can't think of his name. He 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 said, man, he was crazy. I mean, he literally said that. He said, man, he was crazy. <laughs> so right, so Burberry right. remembered you, man. He remembered that. Right, right, right. Larry, Larry Smith had a hell of a game at Ohio State. Would you consider that your best game, Larry? Yeah, for that year, and that's when I really that game really propelled me for my little run I had during the NCAA. I thought I played pretty well during the tournament, uh, considering the minutes I was getting. Um, I think you got in foul trouble. <laughs> See, you have games like that sometimes. You just once you get one foul, you one foul turn the four so fast. And that's just how you work. That was just yeah, because I. I was trying to smack Lou, but I couldn't, so I pick up a foul on somebody else. Well, go ahead. <laughs> and, and KB had four fouls early in the second half, and uh, and as you as you remember, but now I'm running a point. Of, uh, Marcus is having a good game. Lowe was silent. Those Low was silently killing people all year long. He was. He was like, I don't know why he didn't get the recognition, man. He was. Man, Lowe would get 15, 20, 25. Nobody said a word, but Nick went off this game, though. Nick went off. Nick had like 35. Marcus had like 20. Low had maybe 20 something. And I chipped in with my 12 and 8. Like I said, that game there helped me confidence wise. But I, but to be honest with you guys, I thought I'd let you guys down those first couple of years, man. I could have brought way more to the table. But you guys stuck with me. And it was just that one game allowed me to show you guys what I was really capable of doing. And then after that, I just tried to carry that over. And like I said, we had that good NCAA run. I thought I was a big part of that. And then Lib, man, I really didn't like get caught up in that stuff, Steve. That's one thing. Like when I was playing high school basketball, I never looked at numbers or anything like that. I just wanted to hoop, man. So <clears throat> in any game I played, you know, I can't even remember the numbers or whatever I did or uh, accomplished or whatever. I just wanted to hoop, man, and, and win ball games. So I really don't have a particular game that, that I was like, so excited about and I did great or whatever. So I just love to play basketball, man. That was just that was how I was raised, man. It didn't matter, you know, who you played against. You just go out there and hoop, man. And that's what I did. Hey, um, Sean Higgins has a question here, Lib. Okay. He says, ask Lib if he remembers in high school when I use a crank call, uh, call him <laughs> like I leave Sonny Liston. He he threw my voice every time. He did. I was trying he to did. before BC and Nike camp since he was the number one guy ahead of D. Scott and myself. Talk about that, Lil. Man, it's a true story, man. He would, he would call, he would get my number, man, from one of his buddies, and we had the same buddy. And I knew who it was right off the top, but he was like, man, I'm going to get you, man, and, you know, talking, you know, try to put that fear, you know, try to put that fear in you because he knows he's going to, you know, see you. Hey, he don't know you're from the Robert Taylors, baby. <laughs> but, but true story, man. Sean used to do that, man, and to this day, that's that's my guy, man, number one. Like, that, me and he go way back, man, but we had some battles too, man, in, in, in those camps, man, and, and and I'm not afraid to say some of those times, some of those camps, he got me, you know, like BC camp, Sean got me. You know, we, we we played against each other. His West Coast guys was was all, you know, in the stands, chopping it up. My Chicago guys like, man, Liam, go, go, go. You know, it's your time, you know. But Sean, I think he had respect for my game, and I had respect for his game. And we left, we, we left it at that, man. So we both had some crazy high school careers, man, and, and, and went on to play at the University of Michigan. He got the championship. I don't, you know, so he got one up on me on that. So, uh Big shout out to you, Hig, and you're right, man. You got to you got to stop doing that, man. You you should do that every night too, man. Every night, man, about twelve o'clock, because on the West Coast it's a different time zone. So he's yep. all waking me up, man. <laughs> but he did that, man. Sean, you crazy for that one, boy. Hey, what's up? Big ups to Sean Higgins, man. Our boy, our our partner, a brother. Uh, when you, t you when you played the Big Ten Conference, when we did, you you're in the brotherhood. So all yes. the Iowa cats. God rest Roy Marble's soul. Yes. DJ Armstrong. All those dudes from, from Iowa. Ed Horton. Uh, um, Kevin Gamble. Yeah. Uh, Jerry hey, Wright. Hey, hey, Steve, did it seem like to you that Missouri was in the Big Ten because we played them uh, every year? It was like Missouri was in the, the Big Ten as well sometimes, didn't it? It did, Ir Irvin. That's a great point because a lot of the players – that played at Missouri were from the Mich the state of Michigan. Right, right. Yep. Lee Coward and um, yeah, yeah, Lee Nate Coward, Bunn, Nathan Doug Bunn. Smith, Doug, Doug Smith. Right. And so, and and here's the thing: 
I don't remember if those guys ever won the Big Eight. Hmm. Think about that know. for a second. I don't know. It's, it's don't tough know. as they played us. Right, right. right. But it, it, I think could. the year that they had Derek Chivas, they won the Big Eight. The year they had Derek Chivas, I think, is the year that they – which would have been which would have been our sophomore year. Okay. Which would have been our sophomore year. I think that's the year that they had uh, Derek Chivas. Okay. They had, they had Derek Chivas lead. And they had a, a, another young guy, uh, John McIntyre, shoot the cub off the ball from Detroit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, you got a good memory, E. You were – you weren't smoking as much weed back in the day as I was. I see. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was eating and sleeping, man. <laughs> hey, if I ever tell y'all off the air the first time me and Larry met, it's gonna blow no, your mind. No, Larry, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Uh, so uh, Anastasia Walker says hello to Irvin Small. You remember, Hello. You remember Stacey hey. Walker? Anastasia? Yeah, Stacey, yeah. Hey, Stacey, how you doing? Yes, uh, Anastasia's on here all the time, Irvin. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's one of the fam. So, uh, let's see. Donald Whiteside. Yeah, Donald, oh. yeah. Uh-oh, Frank Hartley's in the house. Oh, oh, Frank, no. Frank and D. <laughs> Frank and D, what's up, Frank? I used to play against Frank in high school, man, at Bogan. Frank and who? Mel yeah. 82, God rest his soul. God rest his soul. Mel. Hey, our, our football team could have won some Big Ten games for us. Oh, wait a minute. Big Bopper, Mill Agent, yeah. Yeah. Howard Griffin, yeah. Primo. 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 Primo, used to, Primo used to get up. Hey, uh, hey Quinn, Quinn Parker. Quinn Parker's on here. Yeah, Quinn used to play too. Quinn's on here. Quentin Parker yeah. could who? Henry yeah. Jones could who? Yeah, yeah. They, Mo Gardner yeah. could who? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, dog. We could, played could at Jeff, Embry, could man. Jeff, it used could to Jeff be George who? Could Jeff George who? I don't, I don't remember, remember Jeff playing. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember <laughs> Jeff. But a lot of those dudes could hoop, man. Yeah, Sean they could. Wax. Yeah, Sean Wax, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, they could hoop. Uh, yeah. Bobby Tolley, Seadale in the house. Um, Nate Maurice, let's see. Oliver Lewis, Mario Davis, Orlando Patrick. Y'all y'all remember Orlando Patrick? Yeah, Orlando from Chicago. Yeah, yeah, big O's yeah, on here. Yeah. Uh, oh, did he go to Oak Park or oh, what? what oh, yeah, he, he went. Yeah, and he, about six. he ended up in Western Illinois. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, Octavia Florence Snulligan says it's your DePaul Blue Demons teammates' turn next on Bartles Breakdown. Mark Aguirre, I'm doing that. I'm getting, I'm getting them cats on here. Um, let's see, Andy Brill, Kimberly Smith. ILL Kimberly. Y'all remember Kim Smith from school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's up, Steph Burns? Fam. Uh Sean Raw. Uh what Sean. player did you want to destroy on national television as Harlem High? Y'all go ahead. Who wants to take that one? I've I got said before, man. It didn't matter to me. So I'd let uh, Larry and uh, Irvin go ahead and talk about that. Or you, Steve, uh, about, you know, who you, like, wanted to show up on national TV. You know who I wanted to show up on national TV, show up? And he showed up on me and Kendall. Chris <laughs> Jackson. Mike Boot, I do right <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that kid, that was special, man. Hey, yeah. y'all remember how bad he did me and Kendall? Steve, yeah. Who wasn't that Steve, I watched Kendall the game had a great night. game, though. Kendall, Kendall had a pretty hey, guys, good game. Hey, I watched the game the other night. He didn't do y'all that bad, man. Y'all did him for real. Kendall he had, had, like 20, 20. he had 28 points, Larry. Larry, he had 29 points. 29. What and Kendall he, have? And he, Kendall he, had 20. And with eight minutes left. He found out with nine minutes in the game. Yeah, I remember that. That dude was wearing us oh. out. Kendall Steve. had a good game, but – but Irvin, did you, like we had seven or eight guys scoring double figures that day, didn't you? Yeah, I had double figures too. That's yeah. what I thought. Bardo. But Bardo, you had like 13 in the second half on him. I watched oh. the game the other night. No, he was too little for Bardo and Kendall. He was too little. No, I'm talking about Steve, but saying they give them the business back. That's what I'm saying. Right. Well, I was, well, I was trying, Larry. Back. I was trying, back. Larry, when Lou used to let us freaking shoot the ball because those – they don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. Lou Hinson didn't yeah. want his point guard shooting the ball at all. So Man. the fact that Larry ever had okay. uh, double-digit games and the fact that I had ever had double-digit games is the power of our <laughs> mind 
and the love of our teammates. Yeah. That was it. Because mm-hmm. Lou didn't want us shooting. So y'all can tell I wanted to get that out. And do no right by him. <laughs> hey, we go, we're gonna wrap this up because we're not gonna keep these guys right. here. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to do this once a week. And depending on the the the, the feedback, because we we've had the most I've ever had on this show today. I knew this was gonna happen. And so we'll probably try to do this once a week. We may do more depending on the guys. We'll talk to Kendall, Kenny Battle, uh, Nick, Nick, and Lowell Hamilton. And they're, they're with the group. They weren't able to make the call today. But we're going to get back on, and we'll bring more to you. But I don't want to wear these guys out on the first uh, time. Guys, uh, closing statements. Uh, Irvin, you go first. I, I just want to thank um, uh, my teammates, you know, even the guys that's not even on the call. Just for us having um, uh, a great run, uh, even that we can say that we're still family today and we still call and check on each other today. And it's not just a reunion. It's, it's, it's more. And, and I really consider these guys um, that was on that team and further the teams to be family of mine. You know, um, I remember when my mom passed, you guys sent flowers. And that meant a lot to me because my mom was a huge Illinois basketball fan. She came a lot of games. But. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for being so special and allowing us to be special together and no big eyes or little U's and allowing us to be special together. And, and, I, and I just want you guys to know that I love each and every one of you, man. Appreciate it. Well you. said, Irvin. Larry? Um, just peace and love to all you guys. I love you guys. Let's continue to do good things together. Marcus? Yeah, I wanted to say, man, uh, with the coronavirus going on and everybody stay safe, man, and and keep your distance, man, because we know, man, we are losing people, man. I lost a friend uh, to the coronavirus, and um, it's hard, man, for me to understand what's really going on, but like they say, you can't see it coming, man, so you got to protect yourself. And, uh, and just being with you guys, man, all these years, man, we still friends, we still hang out, we still make phone calls to each other. I think that is so important, man, because we never know what, what someone is going through man, because sometimes we break down, we cry, we sensitive, man. So when we get those phone calls, man, it uplifts us, man. So continue to do that, fellas. Be there for each other. Love you all, man. Um, Great job, Marcus. Love you guys. As you well know, we're a brotherhood. I love what you guys have done in terms of coming back together, uh, continuing to support one another and representing the school and our families in the right way. I also want to give a huge shout out to the Flying Illini fan base and the faithful. You guys have been with us for over 30 years. We love you. We loved you back then. We love you today. And I think that you will be very excited about what we have coming up as we start to roll out some things that we're going to do as a group. So stay tuned. We'll have something coming back at you next week. We may try to do this time next week, but we'll let you know. Thank you so much for joining. I'm sorry I couldn't get to all of your questions. This was the the biggest attended show that I've done ever on Facebook Live, so I couldn't get to everybody's questions, but I will try to go back after the broadcast is over and answer those. So if you have any more questions, make sure um, to get them in. Let people know that this is what we're doing. So you come to Bartle's Breakdown page, join the page and get, and get the notification so whenever we go live, you will know about it. Stay safe, uh, do the safety protocols, Check in on your loved ones. We love all of you guys. And that will do it for this edition of Bartles Breakdown. Until next time, peace. Peace. Peace.